everyone. Welcome back to Glue La La. If you're new here, my name is Jess. I hope you'll consider subscribing and make sure to say hi in the comments. If you are already subscribed, welcome back and let me know how your week is going so far. Last week I created three projects that were for a farmhouse style bathroom. And this week I'm keeping the theme the same where it could still fit into a farmhouse style bathroom. But the pieces that I have this week are a little bit more functional. All right, everyone, let's get started. So for the first project, I'm taking one of these trays that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to give it two coats of the plaster color by Waverly. Now these trays, I've seen them at the Dollar Tree pretty much, oh, I don't know, maybe for the past year. They usually have them in silver or gold. And I really like the little detail that they have around the edge of them that kind of has that hobnail look. And I also found these really neat placemats at the Dollar Tree a few months ago. They kind of have a gray and white buffalo check pattern on them already, and they're sort of a plastic material. So all I did was I measured the base of the tray, and I'm going to cut the placemat down to fit inside the center of the tray. Um, now, since this is a little bit of a plastic type material, I decided not to use hot glue on it because I was afraid the, the hot glue would melt. Plus, since it's going to be in the bathroom, I wanted to keep it a little bit more waterproof. So after I got the placemat cut down to the size that I needed, I decided to use some matte Mod Podge to adhere it to the tray. So all I did was I put a little bit of Mod Podge down in the center and then I laid the piece of the placemat over it and I put a little more Mod Podge over the top to kind of seal it in. And I know the pieces that I created last week, I did a lot of distressing with the mineral color. But this week I wanted to kind of keep them a little bit more simple. So I decided not to do any type of dry brushing or distressing on the pieces this week. But you could definitely do that. And you could even change up the, the paint colors or the style of paint. I always prefer chalk paint because I just think it gives a better coverage and I like that matte look. So here's a look at the tray. I just styled it up with a little candle and some beads, but you can see here you can also fit a box of tissues or a few rolls of toilet paper. So I needed some containers for my bathroom and I found these glass containers at the Dollar Tree and they have plastic lids. And I knew I needed a hole in the lid and if I would have had a hammer and a nail, I probably would have just done that to get a hole but all I had on hand in my craft room was a lighter and a screwdriver so I just heated up the screwdriver and poked it through and I did decide to give the lids two coats of the plaster color and I decided not to paint the actual glass part of the container I just wanted the lids to have the plaster color on them so I I did give it two coats to give it a really opaque coverage Once the paint had dried on the lids, I took two of these wooden beads that I got from Amazon and I took a length of jute twine and I started by tying a knot in the center of the twine and I actually tied it a few times because what I was trying to do was create a knot that wouldn't pop through the end of the bead. So once I thought that I had the knot big enough, then I took a little bit of hot glue and I put it on the edge, the ends of the twine to kind of seal it together so that it would be a little bit easier to string through the wooden bead. And then of course, once I actually strung it through, <laughs> it popped right through. So I had to make the knot a little bit bigger. So depending on what type of bead you choose to use, you'll just have to play around and you know get a knot that'll be big enough that the it won't slip through the bead now the reason I decided to do this is because these lids screw on and off and so I was afraid if somebody if we had a guest over and they saw the containers and they needed something that was inside they would try to just pull on the bead and try to pull the lid off so I wanted to make sure that the bead was really secured on so that if they pulled on it it wouldn't pop off so once I had the knot done, I just strung the jute through the hole that I created in the lid and I put a little dab of hot glue on and I held it in place until it was completely cooled down and then I trimmed off the jute and added a second layer of the hot glue. 
So to embellish the little uh, the lid a little bit, I have this farmhouse style ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and I wanted to put it around the outside edge of the lid. Um, when I hot glue ribbon onto things, a lot of times if you don't flatten out the glue as you're putting it on, it will leave a little bit of a bump under the ribbon. So when I um, do this I just add a little bit of hot glue and after I lay the ribbon down I take my finger over it and I really try to flatten that glue out so that the ribbon doesn't look lumpy around the edges of the lid. I wanted to leave the glass plain is so that you could see what was inside each jar so that way if you don't have a Cricut or another type of vinyl cutting machine you could just stop here and leave these jars go but I do have a Cricut so I decided to create labels for each of my jars so I just used some matte black vinyl and I cut out cotton balls and q-tips for the two jars that I created look at how the jars look when they're finished. Um, I did a quick measurement and if you bought three of these jars you could actually fit um, all three of them on that tray that I created earlier but I only needed two for in my bathroom. So for the last project I found this um, Easter basket at the Dollar Tree and I just popped the handle off and normally I probably would have taken this outside and just spray painted it but it's a little bit cold here so I decided just to give it two coats of the plaster color by Waverly and I kind of started brushing it on but I realized a lot of the paint was kind of seeping through to the inside which really wasn't a big deal because I'm gonna create a liner for this basket anyway but I after I started brushing it on I realized it was easier to kind of pounce my brush onto it to kind of get into all those little grooves and everything so once I had both of the coats of paint on um, like I said, it really didn't matter what the inside of it looked. I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any big paint blobs on the inside. So I did run my brush through the inside just a little bit just to clean it up. So once it was all dry, I took this piece of material and this is actually from an old shirt. And all I did was I added a little bit of hot glue to the lip of the basket and I'm just gluing the material around the outside of the basket. And I kept going off camera here, but you get the idea. I'm just going the whole way around the basket with the hot glue and the material. And it really didn't matter to me if the raw edge of the material was showing because I, I don't really mind having a little bit of that frayed look from fabric. Um, but I really didn't get too much of that from this material. And I am going to go back through after I have all of the material on and wrap jute around it so it'll cover up any raw edges you might have anyway. So once I had the material glued the whole way around the outside of the basket, I laid it out and I cut a good bit of the excess off to start and then once I had most of the excess off uh, where the two edges of the material met um, you know from wrapping it around the basket I did add just a little bit of hot glue just to kind of keep those edges together and then um, I did have to cut off a little bit more material because there was still a little bit too much excess and then I just tucked it down inside of the basket. To finish off the basket, I just took a little bit of jute twine and I started around the lip of the basket and I added a little bit of hot glue and I just started wrapping it around. And I don't really know how many times I went around. I just kept going until it looked filled in enough for, for me. And I just added a dab of hot glue here and there. I didn't feel like I needed to glue it the whole way around. I just needed a, a couple spots to kind of keep everything in place. Here's 
how the basket turned out. Um, even though the basket seemed kind of small to me, I actually was able to roll up two hand towels and two washcloths, which is the perfect amount for this bathroom because this is just a half bath, so we didn't need a ton of towel storage. And here's all three projects together. I really like how everything turned out. These colors are so nice in my bathroom. And I really like that these projects came together pretty quickly. It was mostly just a lot of painting. And I really like this farmhouse style in my bathroom. And it looks really good with the three projects I created last week. So if you missed that video, make sure you go back and watch that one too. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribed because it really helps my channel to grow. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.